Hi, everybody. We're going to, it's 4.02. We're going to allow two to three more minutes to let more people join. Okay, um, it's 406, so let's go ahead and get started. Welcome everyone to the July CAG meeting. Thank you so much for making the time to join us. Um, and without further ado, I will pass it over to Desiree. Hey, Desiree. Hi, Paula, can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, great. Uh, welcome everyone to the 23rd Community Advisory Group um, on July 28th, 2022. 
Um, I, once again, I am Desiree Gazzo from the PMCM Project Management Construction Management um, firm for the Eastside Coastal Resiliency Project. Um, I'm joined here tonight with colleagues from our team as well as DDC um, to present a construction update on the Eastside Coastal Resiliency Project. <clears throat> And I have this funny headset. So if at all I go and it's not working, just let me know. Um, okay, great. So this is the project area overview, which we are all very um, familiar with. So we're going to skip right over that. Um, our Esker focus area. Wait, topic. Uh, oh. Desiree, yep. I can't see anything. Oh, yes. Maybe I should share my screen. <laughs> Thanks. Sorry. <laughs> I thought it would just do it on its own. Um, okay. Okay, can you see it now? Thank you. Okay, so just for the sake of this being recorded and it having the full PowerPoint presentation, um, meeting number 23, project area overview, which everyone is very familiar with, um, the ESCR focus area topics. Um, the agenda was sent earlier today. Um, again, most of what we're going to go over is just construction updates um, and then a couple of what we heard items. Um, so the community call for art, um, I just wanted to include the link to the call for art page um, one more time and the photos of the certificate program that we had. Um, and all of this information is up on the website. Uh, the community tabling, um, I think Paula and Tara sent over uh, some suggestions for where we could table. We had already planned to do Abrams Art Center. Um, we just weren't sure on the date. Uh, and then fortunately, the weather was really great um, on the 26th, just two days ago. And there was a great turnout there. Um, we're definitely gonna go back again. I know that was one of the, the locations that the CAG also recommended. Um, so we will again, take that and the others into consideration. I think Hamilton Fish was another recommendation. Um, so we will, we do have tentatively scheduled to go there on the 30th. And then the um, the 18th, the, the 18th date might change uh, depending on the CAG meeting, if the CAG meeting is on the 18th or is the following week. Um, so we'll, we'll update, you know, this if anything does change. Um, but again, I think, you know, the tabling has been going really well. Um, Right now, we are unable to do tabling on the weekends. Um, it needs to be during work hours. Um, so it, it is, you know, we are, uh, it, they do have to be during the week. So again, if, if you have suggestions for during the week, please reach out. Um, and then um, while we were at Abrams Art Center, we did drop off um, kind of colored pencils and the Esker crossword puzzle and coloring sheet to the kids that were there um, as well for the teacher to hand out. So um, <clears throat> we do, you know, want to work with the community in any way possible. So if there are, you know, uh, outside of summer camps or, you know, really anything where we could reach out to people, there were a lot of new people um, in that location. Um, so it was, it was a really great tabling morning. Um, the information sessions, again, just wanted to include the link to the spring information session, which was in May. Um, and then we're planning an upcoming uh, fall information session, which we're hoping could be in person. So stay tuned for more information on that. Um, so we were due for the um, quarterly update last month, but we uh, held off till this month so we can get a little bit more of the data um, in so we can give a full picture. Um, Trang and Steven are unable to, um, were unable to present this. So I'm going to do my best and I'm gonna put on my hiring compliance hat um, and, and present the numbers for PA2. Um, we do have, so for project area one, we're still collecting the data um, for project area one with, we have about just over 200 new hires for project area one. And we've compiled about 80% of the data to give the numbers that we pr have presented for project area two. Um, so we are working, it is a bigger project. There are more sub consultants. So it's, it's a lot to get all that information. And, and again, since project area one in, in, in administration terms kind of just started, um, 
we have to get that team used to submitting all the paperwork and submitting all the data. Um, so again, we are about 80% with the data for, for project area one, and we will come back and present that. Um, so for the PA2 current staff on the ESCA project, um, currently there are 419 uh, total staff on the project. That includes the PMCM staff, which is the HMTB Lero group, as well as the general contractor or the GC total staff. Um, so, and that's for PA2, that's Perfetto. Um, so for PMCM, we have about 92 total staff. Um, and that, oh, and then the, so then the next kind of row down is the existing staff. So the existing staff was the staff that was already part of the team when we first came on the project. So, you know, when you bid for a project in a competitive bid, you present the team of people that you have, which makes up your, the kind of HNTB Lero JV and the subs that we had planned to use on, um, on the project. So when we started the project kind of day one, there were, um, 88% of the 92 people, so that's about 81 people, were existing on the project. So out of that 92 people, 35% um, uh, fall in the minority category. And then since the start of the project, we've hired 11 new people. And then the new hires come into play on the next slide when we talk about the Section 3 um, individuals. So. That's that. So for the PMCM, we have about 75% males on the project and 25% females. And the industry average for females is 7.7. .7, so we are well above, well above that number. For the GC, the total staff on the project is 327. Um, the existing staff, so they came into the project with 212 people, so 65% of the 327. Um, the total minority of that total staff is 41%. And the new hires on the project so far have been about 115 um, people. Um, and then many of the new hires, the majority of the new hires by the GC team are provided through the unions. So um, the GC or Perfetto reaches out to the union and they um, identify the needs that they have for the project, and then the unions just send um, people to the project based on the availability of um, the staff that they have. Um, and then the um, Perfetto has sent letters to the unions to ask them to prioritize um, local individuals, Section 3 individuals. Um, again, however, it is up to the unions to um, send who they have available. Um, so of the total staff, the males uh, are right now at a 97% and the females at, are at 3%. And the goal for females is 6.9%, um, and which it is, I think, more common, not saying that that that's that's what it should be, but is more common in the for the GCs to have a lower percentage of um, females than than males. Um, so this is it had been requested to uh, provide the staff by residency. Um, I'm not going to go through this whole table, but it is here, and this will be posted um, on the on the website. Um, and then here to the right is the current section three um, new hires. So we are at 30% progress to date. So we need to be kind of at 100% progress. And right now we are at 30%, the PMCM, and the GC is currently at 2.9% progress to date. So again, as we have identified in the past, the Section 3 hires is, um, is a difficult uh, goal to meet. However, we are working with our um, hiring compliance um, subconsultant, Bowie Studios, um, on all of these numbers and are working to, you know, bring on more people as the project continues um, in the next couple of years. Um, and then the MWBE utilization uh, for PMCM, the goal is 31%. And we are currently at the, at, at the goal of 31%. So the um, 
the percentage that the contractor is is currently kind of invoicing or at right now is 31%. So the PMCM is meeting the goal. The goal for the general contractor is 12% and they are exceeding the goal and are at 13 13.7, 13.17%, very specific number. Um, and so we're really pleased with the MWBE, that's Minority and Women's Business Enterprise, that's the MWBE um, utilization numbers. And then just the breakout for the um, MWBE kind of uh, percentages based on the total staff and the new hires, PMCM, 35% um, of our total staff is from MWBE subs and 82% of the new hires, um, so 82% of the 11 new hires, so the majority of the new hires are from MWBE, MWBE sub consultants. And then uh, for the GC, the MWBE subs staff is 49% of the total staff that's on the project, so almost half of the um, staff that's on the general contractors team, they have subbed out to MWBE subconsultants. And then the new hires, so of the 115 new hires, again, which most come from union um, unions and not from subconsultants are 14%. So that makes sense as to why that number is significantly lower because most of the new hires are from from the unions and the unions are not MWBE. Um, so our strategy and good faith efforts to meet the goals, again, the ongoing efforts um, include the general contractors continued outreach to labor unions to assign local individuals to the project, which is what I had mentioned before, um, continued support from the DDC ODIR um, in collaboration with the city agencies as well, uh, the quarterly information sessions, um, emails and continued website updates with resources and job postings. And then we just have a list of the city and local partners um, <clears throat> to the right that we partner with and, and you know, work with on bringing people um, to, the, to the job. Um, so I'm going to just go over project area two construction updates really quick, and then we'll take questions and then we'll do um, project area one. So construction project progress and approach and environment. Um, we'll go into the quick project area overview, project area two, I'll take questions and then project area one. So um, for project area one, most of the work that we had um, spoken about at the CB3 meeting, um, the CB3 meeting. So I, you know, I hope most folks had watched the CB3 meeting because we did give um, quite an extensive update on construction activities at that meeting. Um, so that uh, there's a couple of updates as to when work is going to begin, when those items are going to begin. Um, but generally all the work items are the same. For project area two, I think, um, again, many folks know Azure we Playground is open. Gate 18 was installed. Um, and there is over a thousand feet of flood wall installed. We have some new um, site photos, which are very exciting. Um, I was out on site yesterday and got to see the progress and it was really moving along. So it was it, very exciting. Um, parallel conveyance, I know we've responded to some parallel conveyance questions um, offline that we received through the inquiry tool. Um, but I just wanted to remind everybody that um, you know, DDC is aware that the community is looking for updates on parallel conveyance and as soon as, you know, they are at that point where there is information to share, um, you know, there will be a presentation on parallel conveyance. It, the same thing came up at the Community Board 3 meeting, um, so I just wanted to bring that up here again. So for project area 2, construction progress and activities, um, the the uh, schedule below here, um, we're in the process of updating this since we did um, begin Stycove Park Phase 2 um, already. So this, this graphic is in the process of getting um, updated with more accurate um, dates. So please bear with us on that. We will um, provide an update and we'll post that to the website as well. So we could, Paula and Tara, we could let you know when it's up and then you could let the CAG, um, CAG group know. Um, so that we will be working on that. 
uh, Stuyvesant Cove Park, uh, north of 20th Street. Uh, we have some uh, photos of the seat wall construction um, and the grading. They're starting to put some of the topsoil in um, and grading those, the bermed areas behind the seat walls. Um, the Solar One temporary pavement install is in progress, which is also very exciting. Um, for Stuyvesant Cove Park, south of 20th Street, uh, the pile installation work is happening there. Um, and the, as, all, as we have mentioned in the past, the ferry access does remain open. The ferries will not close um, you know, for, for the project. The access will be um, maintained should you know, a construction activity occur that needs to suspend access, then of course we would let the community know, but it is the intention to keep access open to the ferry. Um, and then again, any, any closures that would need to happen would happen in coordination with EDC. Um, East 23rd Street intersection and the West Service Road, utility work and flood wall construction is ongoing. We have some photos um, under the FDR by exit seven, there's pile installation, um, work happening under there. Um, there's some sewer reconstruction at the Con Ed facility and Avenue C between East 20th and East 18th Street. There is Con Ed utility work. I believe that's um, finishing up, but I don't recall when I was there yesterday um, if it had or not. Um, and then we did receive a question about Murphy Brothers Playground and when that was going to um, start closing in the ball fields, et cetera. So it is anticipated that the baseball fields at Murphy Brothers um, Playground are not scheduled to close until the end of this year, beginning of next year. And those closures will be closely coordinated with parks. We understand that there are permitted activities that happen in the ball field. Um, so that would be something that, again, was uh, coordinated with parks and, um, and, uh, and communicated well in advance um, of any closures. And then just some quick construction photos, and then I'll take, um, then we'll take questions. Um, so here we have uh, the um, gate 18, the floodgate. So that is installed. If you go to Astor Levy Playground, um, you, you will be able to see that. Um, and there was a little demonstration when the mayor was out the other day um, of how the flood wall closure would work. Um, so, so that, um, you know, that they had that little um, ceremony there. Um, and then this is, you can't really see the flood wall under the FDR drive. So over here to the left of the screen is um, Avenue C and where kind of Astor Levy is across the street there. Um, so this is the flood wall that they've been working on under the FDR drive. Waterside is, you know, across the street and to the right over here. Um, so we just wanted to include that because I think not a, a lot of folks, you, like you can't see really in this area. Um, so I was really impressed by the progress that was made um, when I was out um, and excited to see, see these photos. And then this is just a photo of how they construct, how they build the wall. Um, again, we've shown, and we updated the gallery for Project Area 2 on the website, and we'll update it with these pictures as well. Um, but once they have the rebar formwork and then they put these, these um, the orange things here are kind of the forms that kind of make a sandwich, almost like an ice cream sandwich. And then they, um, you know, there's kind of plywood on both sides. And then this is how they pour the concrete within that. So that would be kind of the ice cream that goes in the middle. Um, and then they let the concrete cure and then they remove the formwork. And then that's how they get that, um, the uh, kind of pattern on the wall there. It's a, the, the formwork has the opposite pattern on it. So it's just very interesting, um, but we did update all the photos on, um, on, the, on the website. And then for the PA2 um, AQM, air quality monitoring, um, for Astor Levy Playground, there were um, two small exceedances, again, on June 5th and the 14th. Um, the levels exceeded the PEL for 15 minutes or less. One day was a Sunday when no work occurred. And then on the 14th, it was because a vehicle was idling um, under the, you know, around the monitors. Um, and then for the Solar One monitors, again, they're named the Solar One monitors, but they do cover, um, they have been moved to cover um, 
the full um, Stuyvesant Cove Park. Um, so on June 4th, uh, PM levels exceeded the PEL for 12 minutes near the 23rd Street um, intersection and no work was happening in the vicinity um, at that time. However, heavy traffic congestion was observed. Uh, the PEL for the 24 hour TWA was not um, surpassed and there were only, again, these three minor occurrences. So I could take questions for um, what we've presented so far. Martin? Yeah, uh, I had noticed in the weekly notice the other day that the uh, area by Solar One was being paved or uh, you know, whatever. Uh, several months ago, you had indicated that towards the end of August, um, the north part of Stuyvesant Cove Park will be reopened. Is that still on target? Yes. Yes, it is. Um, they are work. They are waiting. Um, the C rail um, that needs to be replaced, and I think that's one of the items that we're waiting on installation on um, before we could open that area, but significant progress has been made there. Um, and the goal is still to open it um, at the end, I believe it was the end of August. And, and then uh, the Southern part, uh, South of 20th Street will be closed, yes? Yes, South of 20th Street is already closed. Uh -huh. um, right now, the, the entirety of um, Stuyvesant Cove Park besides a itty bitty teeny sliver um, by where you can kind of access the ferry. Sure. Um, just this little part here. Mm -hmm. um, that's the only part that's open right now, but the rest of the park is closed. And then this, the solar one area will open first and then north of 20th street will open. Um, and then this, the Southern part south of East 20th um, will stay, um, will stay closed for for a bit longer. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Paula, I see a couple of more hands. I don't know what order they went up in. Yes, yeah, sorry, my mouse is gonna make trouble. I couldn't unmute. Um, oh, I believe um, Diane is next. Hi, Desiree. Um, if we could go back to the hiring slides for a second. Oh, sure. Yes. Um, there's one that showed the origins, you know, of the. Um, yes. Yes. What is other? Um, that's a great question. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Is it like Connecticut? Or that's I would, is I it would, upstate or? I would, based on, based on people I know personally, it's probably Rockland and Westchester. Mm, okay. Oh, I see. Okay. I can, I can confirm again, my apologies, Stephen and Trang couldn't make it, but <laughs> um, I will confirm that and, and we could let you know what that other is. I know there are people, I guess, that are also working remote, maybe since COVID, but I think Michael might be right that it's probably the northern part of New York and maybe Thanks. some Connecticut. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sandra. Hi. Um, I was wondering um, when that, when the North part of Stuyvesant Co opens up, will uh, the detour also be revised? So yes, when, and I had, we had presented, oops, am I going the wrong way? No, I'm going the right way. Sorry. Um, we had presented in past presentations and in CB3, and the, the last CAG, the revised um, detours, but, and I don't have it in this deck right here, um, but essentially the Greenway, um, the Greenway north of East 20th Street should be the last part to close, uh, to reopen, excuse me, because that's where all the staging, you know, the contractors um, staging and their equipment is, et cetera. So, They'll open north of so the Solar One area. They'll open north of East 20th Street. The detour will remain as it is. And then once they can open the, um, once they could open the Greenway north of 20th Street, that's when the Greenway detour will change 
Um, and then this area, the Greenway south of East 20th Street and into Project Area 1 will, um, will have to close. And they'll wait till they absolutely have to do that until that happens. And unfortunately, CB6, which is this area, doesn't we don't meet over the summer. So would it be possible to come to the fall meeting to explain these? Sure. Yes. Be, mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Sandy, you'll just send us an email of when that is and OK. Absolutely. Thank Great. you. Yes, of course. Uh, Dina. Thanks, Paula. Um, so regarding the scheduling for opening the north end of the park and the blacktop, um, the end of at the end of August, because the park, because the whole park is currently closed, which was not in the original plan, we have no staff available to do maintenance or anything or garbage collection. And we won't until after until probably the first week of September. So we have actually asked to please keep the northern end and the blacktop closed until we're able to actually resume uh, the care of it. Because otherwise, yeah, I think it's going to be a disaster. OK. I, sorry, Dina, I might not have been in that conversation. But I think, uh, you, I think you probably weren't. But I just wanted okay. to point it out for it to everybody that, yeah, our, yeah, in order for the scheduling to work for us, it really is going to need to stay closed just for a, probably another week okay. or 10 days after after the end of August. Thank you. Okay. No, thank you for that update. That's great. Yep. Are there any other questions before Desiree proceeds with the next section? Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, okay. So let's see. Okay. Question. So project area one. So we may have to break this slide out onto two slides in the future because it's getting a little squished with information. Um, I We tried to bold the kind of newer or, or updated um, from the last time we presented information. Um, so in general, the uh, project area one work in the closed area, so that's one through six, is the closed area of the park and then seven through nine is what is the open area of the park. So the soil stabilization activities, which we have um, some photos of in the presentation and dismantling of the esplanade along the waterfront, as well as the deep sewer activities and pile install um, are ongoing in the majority of the, the red area here. Um, and the barges are actively assisting with that work. Um, the Delancey Street, I don't, don't believe anything has started there. However, again, in the, um, you know, within this year, that utility pile and abutment work will start in that number two area. Um, the Corlears Hook Park partial closure, everyone is aware is, is um, in, in effect. Um, currently, the temporary bridge is installed and the Corlier's hook bridge is um, removed with the last portion being removed this evening. So this evening um, from about 3 to 11, um, the contractor should be finishing the last uh, piece of that bridge removal. Um, it was, they were hoping it would be removed in just one overnight due to the construction and the um, existing conditions of that bridge. Um, they were only able to remove those that center span. Um, and we reported on this at the CB3 meeting as well, that the, the two end pieces that were over um, kind of the Greenway and then along Corlears Hook Park, those were the last two um, pieces that remained. We did issue an advisory saying that that would be, they would need night work to do that. Um, and they were, um, so they were able to remove the um, northbound section in one overnight. And then I believe the southbound section, it, it's end, ending up to take them two, two evenings or two nighttime works to, to finish that. Um, so it should um, finish this evening. <clears throat> and then that work for the bridge removal will be complete. And then they could start 
um, kind of finishing dismantling of whatever materials are there um, and then start with the site preparation and construction of the site preparation utilities and construction of the new bridge. Um, the passive lawn partial closure is still active. Um, there will be upcoming utility work right now. It doesn't look like there's much going on there. Um, however, there one part was closed, again, this part over here um, for the temporary bridge. And then the part that's kind of closer to the FDR, um, there will be utility work there that will be starting soon. So right now, again, it doesn't look like there's much going on, but uh, the utility work will be starting in that area. Um, we did, uh, you know, we still had some comments on the drainage condition in the passive lawn. Um, some folks on our team did look at it, it the other day after it rained and it, you know, there wasn't necessarily flooding, um, but they will go back after the next time that it rains um, again to check kind of the condition again and, and assess and assess that. Um, there is also upcoming Con Ed utility work near Montgomery Street and South Street. So this work um, here on Montgomery and South Street has been ongoing kind of in spurts. It had started, it stopped for a bit um, on the steam line and then it had started again. And then now they're at a, another point where they have to do a few days of work on Montgomery Street and a few days of work on South Street. Um, so folks in that area have been alerted that that work um, will happen, that will be daytime work and that will start um, next week. There will be, I, I think there will be um, potentially some side walk and street um, lane closures, um, but there will be flaggers there that can assist with pedestrians in the area. Um, and then in the kind of area six here from Montgomery Street to Cherry Street, um, we did issue an advisory that had mentioned the work would be from Montgomery Street to Jackson. Um, the flood wall does actually extend to Cherry Street um, in this area. So the advisory will be um, revised and uh, um, sent out tomorrow. Um, but the Montgomery Street overnight work uh, for pile um, installation, again, this is, there are only two small pieces of flood wall um, in the project area one area, and that's over here around Gouverneur Gardens, and then it comes underneath the FDR, and then uh, connects here and runs along the Greenway um, until it goes underground in the, the large part here. And then I believe there's a little bit of flood wall down at the end here that connects to PA2, but this is really the only, um, the main part of the flood wall in project area one. Besides this, it will be underground the rest of the way. Um, so that work, um, starting with test pits um, will start tonight um, overnight. And again, the advisory was issued um, and the work was supposed to start last week. But again, all work is subject to change, um, but we try to do our best to give advance notice um, on, on these activities. And even if it gets pushed a little bit, at least the advance notice is there. Um, so the work will start with test pits and then it will continue um, with striping, restriping the ramp, um, and then eventually it will get into, um, in August, there will be some demo and then um, the pile install will start. Um, for the open area of the park, the Con Ed work in the shared use path is ongoing um, and that will again continue for six to eight months. And then in the um, uh, nearer future than, than six to eight months, the uh, work on the retaining wall at Houston Street will begin. Uh, there is a new item that we wanted to make sure we brought to everybody's attention. Um, there will be a partial closure of the Sixth Street pedestrian bridge next week. We have the advisory in, in two slides. Um, it will only be for two days, Wednesday to Friday. Um, Con Edison, as, as everyone has seen, the trench that they're working on for the oil static lines, they need to go now under the, the walkway that the pedestrians are using to access um, the park from Sixth Street. So they need to um, get underneath that, plate the area, and then they could reopen it to pedestrians. So um, 
it has been communicated that that will be um, Wednesday to Friday of next week. And the, um, the uh, advisory will go out tomorrow. Um, we will alert again all the buildings in the area and there will be signage um, and we'll make a pedestrian detour plan as well. Um, Con Ed utility upgrades at East 10th Street are upcoming uh, as well. And then there might be partial FDR lane closures continuing in various locations. Um, again, we, you know, the communication for this type of work is first an advisory is, um, is issued um, unless we backtrack. Um, we try to introduce the work to the CB3 and at the CAG meetings. So we've given look aheads that are, you know, more general. As the work gets closer, then we submit the advisory, which gives about a two to three week look ahead, typically, uh, and a little bit more information on the time of day that the work is happening, um, and, and more information on where exactly that work is happening. And then the bulletin is the more detailed information, which is on a two week basis, you know, that gets updated with um, with times, more specific times and dates, et cetera. Um, and then we revise the advisories as needed if should the work change. Um, and then again, we continually come to the CB3 and CAG meetings. Um, but again, as it is construction, there are um, unanticipated activities that you know need to happen as the construction is moving forward. And therefore, um, the times might change or the you know, if it's, or it might, they might have to do weekend work. And then we try to alert um, building owners that are in the area, residences, et cetera, um, the CAG and CB3 as that work happens. Um, and then again, should there be any questions, please reach out during the, the inquiry tool. Okay. Um, so the construction work sequencing, uh, we are moving along here. It's great to be able to bold all of these. Um, so the inland work, the mobilization and removals are in progress. Um, the sewer replacements and upgrades are also in progress. Uh, the pile installation, the pile installation related to the sewer replacement um, is in progress. And then the work for the prep of the um, concrete foundation and flood wall is also about to start. So these are the activities that are kind of in progress or on the verge of um, starting uh, for the inland portion of the work. For the waterfront esplanade, um, again, the soil stabilization, we have a photo of that. Um, that will show you in the next couple of slides and then the removal of the esplanade. Um, here's just a little bit more of a detailed look at those community advisories. Um, I, I think I, we explained most of it in the, the previous slide. Um, so this is these will be sent out. Again, the night work for the flood wall operations was previously sent out. This will be the update, which has the um, this work extending to Cherry Street. Um, and that'll be um, that'll be sent out tomorrow. And then the Sixth Street Pedestrian Bridge temporary closure. Um, this will also be sent out uh, tomorrow as well. So um, at the CV3 meeting, we showed this first picture here, which is the shoring and the markers for the H pile um, install, which are these red dots. Um, so this is an update of of that work. Um, this is the H pile installs and you can see on the H piles, it has the this number here, this 55, that's the depth of the H piles. So when you see markings on the piles that shows kind of the, the depth um, that, that they're going to, which is, which is pretty interesting. Um, so this is the result of these little red dots. It is the, um, the H pile installation, and this is the temporary formwork here. Um, and then the sewer um, elements will be built, you know, a concrete kind of table or cap will be placed on top of the H piles, and then the, the sewer elements will be on top. And we had that kind of three dimensional detail 
is, which you could find in the CB3 meeting. Um, so this is just the machine that is used to, um, to install those, those piles. This is the um, stone column sto soil stabilization. So this is the machine to the left here. This is, there's an auger on here and we sh we've shown that in previous presentations. The auger um, builds, um, makes the hole. And then this uh, column, the, the stone is put into this kind of bucket and then it goes into the ground to make a stone column to stabilize the soil. And we had, um, again, previous information on that, but I wanted to show you the um, in-progress uh, photos here as it is now happening on site. And these large piles, I know we received one question um, in the inquiry tool and we have to follow up with it, but when you see these large piles here, those are the, that's the crushed stone. Um, that's all clean crushed stone that's been brought in um, via barge and that's what's being used for the, the stone piles. Uh, the AQM update for June, um, there was only uh, one occasion uh, where the levels of particulate matter surpassed the PEL um, for the 15 minute TWA, and that was on 627, um, on the, only for 14 minutes. Um, and then construction you know, activity was closely monitored and the um, dust mitigation techniques were continuously implemented. Um, so the June, these are the June monitoring locations. <clears throat> um, and as you could see, there are about um, five, five or six. Um, so those were the June monitoring locations. And then for July, so these were, these are all of the um, monitors that have been installed in July. So in the July, um, so next month when we report on July, it will be reflective of all of these monitoring locations, um, which again, we had said that at a minimum six, um, six monitors you know, would be installed for construction, depending on the construction activities that were happening at the time. Um, now, um, since July, the construction activities are ramping up with the, um, the sewer, excavation and install, um, the stone columns, um, and much of the other work that's happening um, in the field. So, uh, you know, there have been a significant number more of, uh, of air monitors installed, again, for the existing work and in the anticipation of upcoming work that's going to happen, again, in the areas up here um, for the flood wall install. Um, again, once, the agreements are made with um, Gouverneur Gardens and East River Housing with the work that's happening there on Montgomery and Delancey, um, the upcoming, you know, the work that's going to be happening now in Corlears Hook now that the bridge is dismantled. Um, so the contractor has really, um, you know, prepped in and put in place more air monitors for the work that is, again, now happening in July and upcoming work that's happening in the near future. Um, I know we're running close to time. Well, we started a couple minutes late also, but what we've heard, um, we received the question about the you know, need for more information um, on the Con Ed work. We did provide this information before, so we're just providing it here again, um, that the contractor is performing coordinated work for Con Ed as part of the escrow contract. The work is funded by Con Ed. Um, Con Ed provides their own inspection with oversight by the HNT Bureau, the PMCM, and DDC. Um, the Con Ed work is in compliance with all local and state regulations. And then in certain circumstances, Con Ed may have to prepare areas for work or may perform work um, on their own that is not um, through the contractor as well. And then we are working on that. It was a, an overview of Con Ed work items. Um, requested, so we are working on that, that's in progress. Improved site conditions um, from the on-site meeting that we had with um, uh, several CAG members, the Houston Street ramp has now been um, paved and asphalted, so that should, I have not walked it myself, um, but I will 
um, get out there. Our CCLs have um, been on site um, and that, that again has now been paid. So that should um, correct that drainage issue on there. Um, the lighting around the track house and at Corlears Hook Park is still under review um, with the night work activities that have been happening. Um, they have been taking a look at the lighting there. Uh, so I will be able to provide an update on that. Uh, and then again, I mentioned the passive lawn drainage review is in progress. Um, Corlears Hook signage, um, very early on um, when the temporary bridge opened, I think the temporary bridge opened just right after uh, 4th of July. And there were, we did receive um, several comments from folks that there wasn't really great signage to direct people when they were leaving the ferry into the park. Um, so the contractor and our team had put up one or two temporary signs and then our CCLs had gone out and put up quite a few of these, um, of the yellow exit signs. Um, we will be adding um, additional signs down by the ferry um, landing. Um, but these are the signs we have coordinated with parks as well um, to use for additional directional signage. Um, if, you know, we've, uh, Joyce was really great and put them up in the open area of the park as well, as long with all the access maps. So if you do see a location that you feel needs more signage, please, you know, reach out to us. Um, however, we have been trying to really um, put them up in places where we feel that they are needed. Uh, we will take a look at the Corlears hook um, again, but there are um, several signs up there that we had put in after that first week that the uh, temporary bridge was installed um, because we did receive uh, a few comments that there was some confusion when you got off the ferry and crossed the bridge. Um, so again, those are there. If you see that they are missing, you know, again, please let us know. Um, however, our CCLs are in the park at least once a week, if not more, um, checking to make sure that the signs are all in place still. Um, but again, we will we will take another look and revisit that. Um, you know, our CCLs do a really great job with the signage. However, you know, please, we'd love your input on where more signage is needed and we'll make that and, and post that up right away. Um, the there was a question on the East Houston Street bike greenway um, and the how pedestrians and bicyclists interact with the greenway and the um, and the paths here. Um, we we are you know just kind of looking into this. That was you know a design decision, so it takes a little bit more going back um, and and going through some things. However, I did just want to point out that the um, that there is a, a change of pavement. So there is a clear um, greenway uh, striped pavement where, where the greenway is. And then when, it, when you turn on, get into a pedestrian area, um, the pavement does change. Um, we are going to look into if there are any other markers or indicators for folks using the greenway. Um, so we are looking into that and we will get back to you. Um, there was also a comment about the Montgomery Street, there hasn't been an excess of trucks. So um, starting this week, I'm not sure if it's starting today or tomorrow, there will be flaggers um, in the area of Montgomery Street, um, you know, as kind of assisting with the traffic flow there. Um, so again, you know, thank you for the comments. Um, and then there was another comment about the tree protection in the northern portion of the park um, near the Greenway. Um, so parks has requirements of, you know, how close the work needs to be to a tree in order for there to be tree protection up. Um, so once the contractor gets closer to working near the trees in that area, again, if, if they are within um, that distance, um, then the, the tree protection will go up. So the, you know, parks is working closely or the contractor is working um, with, with parks and the, the guidance that they have there. Um, for the tree protection, but we did make all parties aware that that was a concern. And once the work gets up there, um, they could assess how close the, um, the, the uh, construction activities will, will be. And that's the last slide.
Thanks, Desiree. Um, okay, we have a few questions lined up, Dove. Uh, there we go. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for the presentation. It was very informative. Um, I also want to thank, I did receive a few days ago, the I think it's called the Gantt Report, the construction timeline for PA1, which I thought was very useful. Um, I think it, to add on that, um, I think it would be useful to have a third color or some value or some column um, capturing what the estimated, the planned end date was or initially was. So we could see when things are getting bumped out where we can know where there is uh, problems that occur. And while looking at that um, report, there's like one value that I know because it's you know something I can oversee is the Delancey Street Bridge construction. And when I look at that timeline that was sent out, it says that it starts in quarter three of 2000, I mean, 2022, which leads me to question is, is the quarter three starting July or is quarter three looking at the fiscal year, which we're now in 2023, which I'm unsure of, but either way, I know that no one from the city has reached out to us in a while regarding the construction. I know that affects our lots and we would be involved in that. So we haven't heard anything from it, which just leads me a little bit to question on some of you know the information that's on the on the timeline. So that's just sure, Dev. I could speak to that. Thank you. Thanks for the comment and thanks for taking a look at that. Um, th we did provide the Gantt chart as requested in the CB3 meeting. Um, so if anybody you know does have questions on that, uh, we can you know we can take them. So. It is not fiscal year, so it is. It would be quarter three, which would be July, August, September is quarter three. Um, the, you know, the the Gantt chart is the projected timeline. It, you know, the work that has to happen at Gouverneur's Garden and East River Housing is um, hinging on, you know agreements between all the parties, between the city and the, and the, and the um, owners. So that, you know, is dependent on, uh, again, those agreements and, um, you know, that, that work there. Um, so correct should, you know, that, again, all work in the, in, is subject to change. Um, the contractor is also free to start working on, you know, other items if, if things, you know, don't work out as they have originally planned. However, that is the approach that the contractor has laid um, laid out and the schedule that has been approved. Um, and then should, you know, should there be changes and updates, then we would communicate those and work would not happen um, at, you know, a stakeholders, um, establishment building, et cetera, without communication. I, I am, it is my understanding that DDC has been in communication with, um, with East River Housing. However, I do not know all the details of that. So Dove, I could follow up with you. Um, I, I appreciate it. We can take that offline. That's not, you know, I mean, yeah. I, I just want, and again, um, I do appreciate it. I think this should be something that would be useful if we got this maybe quarterly for, you know, if not, you know, at least quarterly for the CAG. And then again, I do think that having another column, you know, where you say we have like start date or estimate start date, I don't remember what the column mm -hmm. name was, the, it's column B. Yeah. But um, I think if we had a column, uh, add a column saying, you know, initial, like, you know, um, end date, so we can see where we're, you know, when things are getting bumped off and things are being shifted, the CAG will have a, you know, understanding on seeing where things are and be able to, you know, look into that, you know, be involved in whatever manner may be needed at that time. Thank you so much. No, thank you. Michael. Thank you. Um, hey, Desiree, nice to see you. Hello. Um, I have a few questions, not surprisingly all related to Corlears. Um, <laughs> so uh, the first, uh, the stuff around the new ferry landing and the, and the temporary bridge. So, um, in terms of lighting, I, I heard you say that they're looking into, um, I guess, lighting and park in general and, and some other areas. So um, can you find out if that is why our lights have been on 24 seven for the past couple of weeks? Um, normally our 
street lights come on at dusk, but they've been hardwired on for the past two weeks um, okay. all day. Um, and I've been getting a lot of uh, questions about that from the community about the basically wasting the electricity and the light pollution. So, um, and then uh, if you have any leeway to help us here at all, um, we can really use a garbage can at the landing of that pedestrian bridge because people are coming off that ferry with snacks and beer and whatever, and they don't want to wait the hundred feet it takes to get to the nearest garbage can in the park. And they're just throwing it on the floor. Okay. Um, and then lastly, around communication stuff with the contractor, I understand and I've heard you say before that the, you know, the contractor has certain leeway to do things, um, you know, when, when, you know, as needed. So, but uh, in relation to what happened last month with the unexpected closure of our dog run, which yes. was never in the project scope, no. um, I still never really got an answer as to how that happened and how the and why the contractor did that and why he was so resistant to moving that fence to reopen the dog run. Um, sure, Michael. I'll. I mean, I I had thought we replied to the emails. I will go back. Um, I don't think. I'm not sure if the entrance to the dog run was ultimately in, you know, indicated in the drawings and therefore the fence just went where it was in the drawings. But um, nonetheless, you know, we did try our hardest to resolve that within the 24 oh, yeah. hours. Yeah, you did. I mean, and I, I'm not complaining. I just want some clarification as to sort of like where the mis miscommunication happened and, and you and Joyce were like, above and beyond. I mean, you called me from vacation. So <laughs> I, I have no complaints for, about you guys. Um, sure, I'll I'm try just, and follow up. I'm with just that. a little worried that the contractor like feels like they can go rogue whenever they want to go rogue. Um, and I'm and I'm most concerned about the magnolias that are in that fenced off section, which I know you and Parks has already assured us will not be cut down. But you guys aren't at the park 24 seven watching the contractor and what he does. So like, I, I, I don't feel confident that the contractor is not gonna cut them down because he doesn't feel like they're in his way. Okay, we can, I'll follow up on the, the item about the contractor. Um, I, I will say, I think it was probably someone who was following the drawing and in the drawing, it was 10 feet one way instead of 10 feet the other way. And that's where, that's what the drawing says and that's why it was there. I will follow up with that. Um, and when we, the next time Joyce or I or Sonia are on site, um, we will take a look to see if, I, I don't recall if the tree protection has been put up for the magnolias yet because I don't think they've been actively. So we'll follow up on the tree protection, make sure it's installed and then we can, um, make signs also to go on the tree protection to make sure that the magnolias um, aren't aren't since we can't you're right we're not there 24 hours a day so um, we'll we'll make sure that we'll do our best to make sure that the contractor is very aware that those magnolias need to stay thanks i appreciate it yes diane hi desiree so I wanted to ask about the, just to make sure I'm clear on the details of the Sixth Street Bridge closure. Yes. Mm -hmm. So partial closure means um, that the entire bridge is closed, but just for a couple of days. Yes. And, okay. and sorry, maybe I said par I temporary closure. Okay. Maybe partial was the bad word. Yeah. That temporary would be closure. Yes. Is that is, is temp is does it say temporary and yeah it does yes. in the advisory yeah I think that's better great okay yeah so yep. is that that's going to start on Wednesday morning right yes okay and then do we expect it to be uh, reopened by Friday evening we so that people can use it over the weekend for the weekend yes okay great yes okay that is what that is what I have been told that's what we're putting in the advisory and you know, we're hoping everything goes fine and then it is open for the weekend because that was my concern also. Okay, yeah. And then what kind of signage will there be on the uh, west side of the FDR? So, because yeah. a lot of people will probably come there and then freak out because they can't get across the bridge. Right. So um, Joyce and I are working on what additional signage we will put up. You know, I think there definitely needs to be signage and I haven't 
seen the full signage plan. So uh, tomorrow that is going to be kind of our goal is to kind of review that and see where we need to supplement for, um, you know, for putting out signs either tomorrow afternoon or Monday first thing. Um, and then we will make sure that, you know, I guess a block from each out, sorry, you know, a block out um, to the west and then the north and the south um, are have that signage so as folks are approaching they will be notified um, we'll put it at Houston Street as well where you know a lot of people just are so that way they're aware you know that it's that it's happening um, probably at 10th Street um, again we'll send it to um, Reese and Wald that are over there and mm -hmm. hopefully they could share it with with their um, folks um, and then again in that you know, just in the community outside of um, outside of the the, the closure, um, we'll try and post them as well. And if yeah, you have any suggestions, <laughs> well, I have one. Um, <laughs> if it's possible, if you can point out to people that if you come to Sixth Street and you can't get across the bridge, you can go up to Tenth, right, yes. or down to Houston, right there along the FDR. You don't have to backtrack and go back inland Into a couple the, blocks and all of that, right? You can just you can you can just go north or go south right there along the FDR and you'll still be able to get into the park. So that might that might be helpful to yeah, see people. So, um, and then Joyce, similar to the access plan that we have um, up now that shows you kind of the access for that lower or upper end of the park. Um, we're working on kind of a revised, a temporary revised one that mm -hmm. folks could use. But actually looking at this, we should we could also put the arrows right on here that just show you to walk to 10th and walk to Houston for access there. So we can that add it to great. this and we could add it to the, um, and we, we are working on like an access plan, but we'll add it to the advisory as well. Okay, great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any thank other you. questions? <laughs> Any other questions? <clears throat> And again, the inquiry tool is always open or through Paula and Tara if you have any questions. Okay, I guess there are no questions um, in this moment. So thank you, Desiree. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank Thanks. you, Desiree. Good night. Hi, Desiree. Bye. Uh, I don't know where the stop sharing is. Thank you to all of the city reps. Um, you are free to leave. We'll just start the CAG. Um, portion in a moment. Um, just we'll just take like one or two minutes for a bio break. We'll start up at five eleven.
Hey everybody, welcome back from the break. Um, let's go ahead and start this CAG only portion. Um, not a whole lot of CAG members here, but wanted to um, at least first just open it up to see if there's anything um, in what we heard today or in what you heard today that you would like to, to bring up at this moment. Uh, this is Diane. I I have not had a chance but to do this yet, but I actually would like to go through that uh, chart that they provided at CB3. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, maybe it would be helpful if the CAG has questions to compile them all into one place, because it looks to me like, um, well, I don't know, like the timeline is in pretty broad pieces. But it looks like it may be a little bit different from some of the things I've been saying before about the North End. So um, I would like to get all our questions together and really go over that with them and understand what they're thinking. Great, yeah, thanks, Diane. We were actually gonna uh, bring this topic up as well. So I've, I sent it out. If you weren't able to be at the CB3 meeting or haven't seen the CB3 slide deck, I did share the Gantt chart with the CAG a couple of days ago. So. Um, Yes, please let's heed Diane's suggestion. And um, if you haven't already, take a look at that and send me and Tara your, your feedback, and then we'll aggregate the feedback and pass it on to, to DDC. And can we do that by the 5th next Friday? Oh, yeah, thank you for suggesting a deadline. That would be great. So yes, please share your feedback by next Friday, August 5th. And I think it's a great report and should be, you know, given up more frequently because I think it gives us a nice visual aid. Yeah, definitely. I think if we, what we do is yeah, make sure that we're getting all the information that was requested because I know that it took some time for them to get this Gantt chart together so we can give them the feedback on it. And it is something that we, um, we will want them to present regularly and update regularly. Anything else about um, what you heard tonight, this afternoon? I'm more interested in what we didn't hear still, which is I don't hear enough ever about the um, parallel conveyance. And I know it's always something that's gonna be eventually more talked about. Yeah. But I'd like to know about it before it starts that we you know have you know open dialogue and know what the construction that's actually happening in our front yards um, will be like and what's going on. I do think that's a good point, Dov, and that you know we it would be helpful if we can be proactive rather than reactive. And we can only do that if we are being presented stuff before it happens and not as it's happening or after it's happened. Got it. Yeah, we are we are trying to impress upon DC the importance of this. Just generally speaking, to get information as soon as possible. Um. Anything else about what we didn't hear tonight? Well, I know that there's, you know, it, it continues to come up. I think in most of our CAG meetings, and, and I don't think that the members who are sort of most adamant about questioning it are with us tonight, but I'm just curious about the Con Ed work that's sort of outside of this project, but related to this project and how it relates to what we're doing and what our group is and what we have purview over. Um, because, you know, I know that there's a lot of opinions about wanting to know what's going on with that Con Ed work, but it's one thing to know about it, and it's another thing to want to be able to do anything about it. And I don't think our group has the ability to do anything about it. Okay. Anything else? Uh, 
Um, I think the, the other question that I have is, you know, what's the process they're going to use if something really, you know, unexpected happens or, you know, if there's a, a sort of large change in what they're planning to do um, because uh, between now and say mid-September, because they there is no CD3 meeting or CD6 meeting, I think, um, at all in August. So that CAG is the only uh, body, I guess, that will be meeting with them. Um, and so, you know, are they prepared to, um, commu if, should, if anything crazy happens, um, should they, are they prepared to, um, you know, talk to us about it, and make sure that everybody's well informed? Yeah, I mean, I think regardless of, you know, whether there's a CAG August meeting, you know, the, the, the communication is, you know, not supposed to stop or even slow down um, between us and DDC. So I would hope that they would, if, if there is a, you know, a, a, a major change that they would, you know, contact me and Tara and we would in turn um, inform the CAG about this change. Also, I saw that they they um, they responded to the question about emergency preparations if a severe storm should happen. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was it's a paragraph in the CAG question log. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I think that's another, um, that's something we didn't get into today, but um, going into the fall, I think people get a little bit more anxious around here because that's when Sandy happened. Yeah. Also, we've had problems the last couple of years with, you know, heavy rains, et cetera, um, even yeah. in August. Um, so I think that's something else that we should talk about with them. Um, what would it look like? Um, I, I know they gave it that general response and they say, yes, we have a plan, we'll secure the equipment. You know, we think that um, the, the excavations can handle some rainfall, we'd pump it out afterwards. But, you know, what would that look like? What would we be see, what would we see happening and how would we know that, you know, everything's all set? So mm -hmm. that's the other thing on my mind right now. Okay, yeah, see that, that in other words, that response was not too general. Yeah, it's, I mean, that's, that's great. They've been saying all along that they have a plan. Um, but, you know, um, um, I know that, you know, for, for example, when we've talked about uh, interim flood protection, the city has always said, well, we need, you know, advance notice. Um, we're going to make a call about interim flood protection, I don't know, 48 hours ahead, and we're tracking the weather. And, you know, is that the same kind of process they would use with the construction areas that are, you know, um, that particularly where there are trenches and heavy equipment now? You know, what does that timeline look like? Um, you know, just those kinds of questions. Okay. Any other topics people want to raise? We come to a conclusion about next month. I think that you know we should definitely be something we should be addressing, and you know rather than last minute. Um, no, we have not come to a conclusion about next uh, about meeting next month. Um, we didn't get you know when I queried y'all, um, we didn't get a very strong response. I think I heard from like nine people who said, or eight people who definitively say they said they could make it. Um, is there, of the people here, is there enthusiasm for an August meeting? Well, I was one of those eight people who responded yes. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, yes. Yeah, <laughs> I, me too. I, I think, you know, again, I think that, you know, just because the, the community boards take a break in August doesn't mean that the construction's stopping. Um, and so I, I think that we should have an update. I mean, it's unfortunate that the numbers of CAG members attending meetings has been dwindling lately. And, and you know, maybe 
we need to send a message out to the to those members that have missed you know the majority of the meetings asking if there's another representative from their organization that should take over for them or yeah i've been you know, starting or, to do that yeah, yeah we've been doing that and we've had we've had actually quite a few conversations around this um, I mean, I do think a lot of it does have to do with summer. Um, if there was an alternative way in which um, information could be, I mean, we, we know we get the, the bulletins. Um, we are having these ongoing conversations throughout the month with DDC. So um, yeah, I mean, I know that we, we want the opportunity. Maybe we can think of like an something of uh, an alternative um, to try to get, you know, at least maybe if you if you all want um, DDC and HNTB to be present. Um, to figure out how we can maybe have um, some FaceTime with them, but then it not be a, a full on CAG because I, yeah, at this rate, we did hear about, excuse me, hear from about eight folks, but even then not everyone said that they would necessarily be able to make the 18th. So even of that eight, it's, it looks like the number might be even smaller and to have everyone come, all these agencies come when there might not even be 10 CAG members, it's, it's a bit of a challenge to try to, to, to get them. Since the north part of Stuyvesant Cove Park is supposed to be open and done by them, I really would like to hear from them at, you know, uh, towards the end of August to see if in fact it is, or if it's not, why not? You know, they've been focused, focusing on the end of August Marty, I, I really strongly would like them not to open it until September because we don't have the staff to, to clean uh, and maintain it. Uh, so uh, Solar One is going to advocate strongly for them to wait until the first week of September when we're going to be able to have a plan in place for how we're going to take care of it. Because but, Well, if, if not to open it, but then at least to give a, tell us that it's ready to be opened, that the work has been done. And uh, you know what 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 you see is what we get, not necessarily that the space will be open for the public. That's what I'm saying. Okay, yeah, that's fine with me. And yeah, I, if I just, not why not? <laughs> I just want to. This is Christina. I just want to mention that even today we're not much more than ten people off the cake that attend. I don't think that's an argument. Um, to not have a meeting in August because our attendance in general is low at these CAG meetings uh, and that's a whole other problem. But I, I don't remember whether I responded or not, but I feel you did. We should have, a, we should have an August meeting. Yeah. And I mean, this might not be a topic for, for right now, but you know, I know that we have our, our guidelines and, and I would have to look at them again, but because I don't think there's anything in there about attendance, attendance and, and whatnot. And I don't know if we want to, you know, potentially maybe revise those guidelines to, to, to be kind of in line with what community boards do. And that's, you know, if you miss a majority of the meetings, you're not on the committee anymore. Yeah. Um, I, I think we're going back to the organization that they're representing. That's really going to be, you know, so if you have someone presenting, uh, you know, location X, whatever, you know, whatever it may be, I'll say, let's say East River, because I'm East River Housing. And then if I'm not showing up, it's, you know, it's East River's responsibility to um, make that decision about their priority. Um, the same thing with, you know, whatever other organization it is. Yeah. And that's, yeah, and we're trying to like figure that out. Like there's some, like for just to cite an example, like Waterside Management has not, you know, th th there are several vacancies actually right now, including that entity. So we're trying to figure out if, and we're talking with some of the electeds, if, um, if it even necessarily makes sense for every organization that was originally on the CAG to remain on the CAG. Um, so yes, more to come on that. Any other thoughts about August? I just think it's important to, uh, you know, keep the meetings going, the information flowing. Uh, I think the meetings are very important. A lot of the information that I learn is from questions that other people 
ask on items that I'm not, you know, personally, you know, looking at. Mm-hmm. So, you know, those are things that, you know, and I think I think that that part is very important in the group is, you know, having everyone here because we all have different outlooks and are, you know, and are, have different skill sets and knowledge that, you know, we all bring. And I think that's very important. And we, we find out more from them by everyone that, you know, asking and following up and I'll say keeping them honest. Got it. Okay, any other thoughts about this or anything else? Diane, I wanted to um, ask you about the um, the notes that you took at the walkthrough and um, and how eventually, and you've invited the, the fellow, the other people on the CAG who on that walkthrough to, to comment on it, but um, do you still eventually want to open that up to the rest of the CAG so you can get feedback from others about what the city has adequately or not adequately responded to? Um, yeah, I think that's why I wanted to share the notes because I, I, I feel that, you know, the improvements uh, or, you know, the, the fixes that we asked for, some of them happened very quickly, but others are moving very slowly. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, I think that, you know, we should not be afraid to ask for periodic walkthroughs if we need them to address problems. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we're getting to the part of the summer now where the days will start to get a little bit shorter, but it's hot. So people stay in the park after dark and without adequate lighting, that's not great. Uh, You know, things like that, right? So I think there are ongoing concerns. And, um, you know, if the folks who were on the walkthrough don't have any additional comments, then I'm fine with sharing with everyone. But I think the idea would be um, for us to, you know, as the keg, just look at what hasn't been addressed yet, think about how urgent it is, and then, you know, um, either through you guys or through another walkthrough, let the city know that we still think there are open issues that need to be addressed. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they have indicated that they were totally game to, that that wasn't, you know, the last walkthrough that they're, they're game to do it again. Yeah. I mean, I don't know that we, there, you know, I haven't seen a lot of new issues. It's just that there's this lingering list of about half the stuff that we talked about um, that hasn't been fixed yet. So mm-hmm. not sure what the best way to get action on it is. Um, Maybe another walkthrough at this point is not necessary, but putting some pressure on to get the open issues fixed. Um, oh yeah, no, I, to- I agree. Yeah. yeah, I was yeah. just saying in general, a walkthrough could happen at some point in the future if it, if it seems like it makes sense for another one. Okay. Yeah, great, okay, that's good, yes. Um, okay, uh, Tara, am I missing anything? No, I think that's all. Um, okay, well, uh, we're ending kind of early, um, but I still, but before we adjourn, I just want to make sure that, um, you know, g- give someone the last word or uh, if there, if anyone wants to say anything, you can do so now and otherwise we'll adjourn. Thank you, Tara and Paula for keeping us on target. How's that yes, for last you. word? Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, I, I wasn't on when you took attendance. Yeah, me. actually I didn't. Um, oh. so I realized that once we started the CAG portion and I think everyone um, I'm like, is still here, I hope. Um, I know there's a few CAG members who are no longer here. Yeah, I but... think actually based off everyone, I mean, I'll, I'll we read off the names, but I know I think Io stepped off, um, but it's Richard, um, Christine, um, Sandra, Dove, Dina, Diane, Michael Marino, Martin Barrett, Susan, Tony, um, and, and as I said, Io was on earlier, and Sam. Um, so if I missed anyone, and I'm looking to see if there were, if there are any just yet, um, maybe phone numbers. Nancy's about. here. Nancy's oh. here. Oh, hi, Nancy. It's so great to see you or hear you. Hi. Okay. Listen, I, I apologize for my absence. It's just that these meetings are during my working hours. Mm. Okay. It's really hard.
out of work, at least to, uh, for some part of the meeting. It just so happens today I had to pick up a car, so I am able to be on the meeting. I understand. Okay, so, so then I apologize to everyone. Yeah. Oh no, thank you, and I appreciate it. I mean, if there, it seems like. I don't know if there are some additional, I mean, we've asked many times if there were like work conflicts and that's, this is not to say you would answer specifically to call any you out specifically, but it's just in general, I do know that this is, this is during work hours for, for many folks. Um, so if, if this is challenging and being that we just lapsed on that first, you know, six months of meetings that we set, you know, this could be a good time for us to re-examine the time and the hours. Uh, maybe starting at 5 p.m. Um, you know, I, uh, it's just some things that please, if, if you all have um, uh, thoughts or think that, you know, these meetings are, are rather difficult for you to attend because of the time of day, um, we can think about um, trying to move, push it back just a little later just to accommodate, um, to make sure that we're, we, we can um, maintain our attendance and bring our numbers up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And again, whatever you guys decide, you know, I'm just one person. Yeah. Um, I will, I will, I, you know, I will agree with, and I'll, I'll just be joining the meetings late. <laughs> yeah, which is fine. And then, I mean, we, and then we also have the opportunity for, um, I mean, that's also, you know, it's a good thing that we, we have the meeting recordings available. We don't want, we didn't have attendance um, in the bylaws because we didn't want it to be punitive. Um, you know, that's, we wanted to be flexible having the meetings recorded so people could look at them later and having the meeting notes available. We try to get those out quickly to you all. So we can, we, if we know not everyone can attend the meetings. I mean, that's just the facts. So if we can figure out ways to keep people engaged and even if they cannot attend every single meeting, um, I would love to be able to like talk through those other options as well. Thank you, I appreciate. So if there's anything else, I think we, yeah, we can adjourn. We'll give you 25 minutes back. Um, it's rather hot outside. I'm sure you, you all might want to enjoy some of that. Um, and we'll, um, again, just to remind you all, please look at the Gantt chart email that Paula sent um, and please get any um, feedback and questions, responses to us by the 5th. Um, and we will let you all know, um, if not tomorrow, early Monday, as to whether or not we will have a CAG meeting next month on the 18th as proposed. Hey, thank you. Right, thank you. Good night. Thank you. Have a good thank evening. you. Good night. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Good night, everyone.